Okay, so my current project is investigating how humanity has harnessed the power of the sun. And as Richard was saying, particularly the roles played by literature, art and culture in general in imagining, mythologizing and reflecting the possibilities of solar technology. Now, the oldest story of solar power concerns Archimedes, who is said to have defended the city of Syracuse using an optical device which converged the sun's rays and ignited the Roman fleet. And especially during the early modern period, this myth had an agency in the real world. It inspired natural philosophers such as Athanasius Kirk and Isaac Newton to devise burning mirrors and lenses of up to three feet in diameter and made from glass or polished metal, which on a sunny day were far more powerful than furnaces at the time and amazed audiences with their feats of combustion. And so in the cultural imagination, these sublime technologies were exalted as compelling symbols of humanity's dominion over nature, suggesting that the practical application of knowledge gave access to a primal, almost divine power. And one mirror even became part of the absolutist iconography of the Sun King himself, Louis XIV, as we can see in this illustration. Meanwhile, the small handheld burning lens was seen as a wondrous tool in itself and became a fashionable accessory within polite culture. For John Donne, Percy Shelley, Robert Browning, and many, many other writers, this gadget was a potent metaphor for intensity, focus, mediation, precision, and penetration, used to describe the, the, the merging of fragmentary feelings into a single passion or the bringing of light to the dark interiority of the soul. And in William Golding's anti-atomic fable, Lord of the Flies, piggy spectacles set most of the island ablaze, serving to suggest science's destructive potential if placed in the wrong hands. But large burning lenses were crucial to enlightenment chemistry. By putting two lenses in, in series, Antoine Lavoisier created an awesome machine, the Large Hadron Collider of its time, if you will, <laughs> with which you could investigate the destruction of diamond and other substances. And Joseph Priestley used a lens like this one to heat mercuric oxide, isolating a gas he called deflagisticated air, but we know as oxygen. Condemned in his own day as a radical, a century later, Priestley would be memorialized as a scientific pioneer with the power of the sun in his hand, in his statue um, in Birmingham. Now, emulating Archimedes was even proposed to Napoleon as a military endeavor. And whilst the coastal assemblage of mirrors to burn the British fleet never came to fruition, I think we know about it, the scheme was taken up within the fantasies of caricaturists to brilliant effect. Now, furnace design improved in the 19th century, meaning that burning glasses were used less and less in the lab. But industrialist inventors combined thermal optics with steam technology to construct solar-powered motors. And the discovery of selenium's photoelectric properties allowed Victorians to imagine futures powered by the solar cell. And science fiction writers of the 20th century were even more excited by this prospect. For instance, Isaac Asimov, in his 1941 story, Reason, conceived of space stations harvesting solar energy and beaming it down to Earth in the form of microwaves, an idea currently taken seriously by some engineers. But perhaps more importantly than imagining these concepts, writers such as Asimov have used their fictions as kinds of thought experiment through which they can study the possibilities and dilemmas associated with renewable energy. Recently, writers and artists have explored the creative potential and social and economic challenges of solar power, particularly to bring into focus the issue of tackling climate change. But the, the sublimity of the latest solar technologies could potentially hinder the green agenda by cultivating a public perception that human reason will naturally find a way out of environmental problems, rather than requiring concerted global cooperation. So by raising awareness of the, the cultural history and imagined futures of solar power, my project hopes to contribute to public understanding of renewable energy at a crucial time of debate. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs>